hello, 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 folks. So, overwintering your peppers, that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, I started off the process of this in the video for last week, and this is me carrying on and finishing it up. But, overwintering your peppers then. Well, if you didn't know, peppers are actually perennial, the same as tomatoes. And that means they don't actually die over winter, they keep growing, and you can have that same pepper plant going on for years and years and years. Generally here in the UK though, we don't have plants that carry on year to year because, quite simply, our winters are just far too harsh for them. So normally what we all do is we just harvest and cut down all our pepper plants sort of nowish time, September, October time, and we discard them. And then in January, we'll get started going again. We're getting seeds sown and getting things going for the next year. And I have done that every single time and it has worked brilliantly for me. And that's what most of you guys do too. But how awesome would it be if we could get that jump start on next year and start off with a plant that we already know is really, really good and a great producer. And it's that wee bit further on. And that's why people overwinter the pepper plants. Now, we can't just leave them as they are. They'll just, they, they won't cope with the weather. Winter is far too cold. And if you've got plants that are outdoors, if you get a risk of frost and things like that, it'll absolutely decimate your plants. So there are a few steps you need to take to make this work. And that's what we're going to do. Now, this is going to be a fun experiment with us, okay, because I tried this once before and it wasn't successful, so this is me giving it a try again this year. So it's going to be really interesting to see if I can get mine to survive over winter and if you can get yours to survive as well. So it's a bit of fun. Now, as I said, I started this in the previous video, so the first thing you need to do then, and this is the bit that's quite a shocker if you've never done it before, you need to cut back your plants. So take off all of the fruit that's on the plants, take all of the peppers off, and then you want to cut away all of the foliage. Yep, all of it. I know, it's quite shocking, okay? And then we're going to prune the plants right back as well. Okay, so as I said, I started this for the previous video, so I have already, as you can see, I've taken my plants out of their pots because I didn't have the space and I was clearing up. You can do this while they're still in their pots. But the next step was to take all of the foliage off and then we're going to cut them right back. So I've got this one here that I think is going to be a fantastic example to show you. So what we're going to do then is, now, we're going to be talking about nodes, okay? That's the important thing here. So if you're not confident about nodes yet, not to worry, I've got you covered as always. Up in the left, and in the description, I'm going to post a video that I did last year all about pruning plants at nodes to take cuttings, okay? I did it with my little salvia, so it'll tell you all about what a node is and how to recognise it. Don't worry. So watch this video and then go back and watch that one and it'll fill you in. But what we're going to do is, you can see here that the, the plant has a main stem and then it starts to branch out in this V, okay? Now the V is important, we're going to cut above the V. But also, what you'll see here is I've got two plants that are tall and two that are really short, okay? This is going to be of interest to some of you guys who asked me about topping your peppers. This is the difference. These two short ones I topped, which means I pinched out the growing tip when they were very, very young. When they were only maybe four to six leaves tall, I pinched it out. So instead of getting this very tall plant, they started going bushy very, very low down. Okay, And that's why these are different sizes. You don't have to do it, it's just one of those things you can do if you want a smaller, bushier plant. But anyways, the V is important, okay? So we're going to the V, and we're going to drop our glove, that's not ideal, okay? And then we want to go up the V and look for nodes. So the nodes, you can see they're these bulbous areas where the leaves grow out of. They're usually just above or below a leaf, and that's where we're going to cut to, just above these. So we want to look at where the V's are, the natural divisions, and we're going to cut just above that node. Okay, so that's the first one done. And then, I've got a leaf on there I don't want, so I'll take that off. On this side, so I'm going to go up and I'm looking for these nodes, and that's it there. So I'm going to cut just above it. 
and I'm going to take any of these extra side shoots off as well. Okay, and again, I'm looking for a node. There's one there. I'll cut above it. So there we go. So it looks really quite drastic, okay? Uh, you now have a very, very bare plant, but that's the idea. You're going to make this go dormant over winter, so you don't want it to have loads of foliage that it has to support, okay? You want it to be able to go dormant and just survive and then kick back into life in spring. Okay, so I've now got my very, very bare stick of a plant. The next thing I want to do is check the roots, okay? Any damaged or diseased or nasty looking roots you're going to cut away. And if you have a really big root ball like this one, you want to trim that down, okay? Now, I'll probably take maybe a third of those little hair roots off. Again, it's terrifying if this isn't the kind of thing you've done before. But don't worry, the plant is going to go dormant. Okay, so we've got these quite <laughs> poorly looking specimens now. So I'm going to pot them on and this is a chance to talk to you about the environment they're going to need because it's important. Now, if you're going to leave these out in your greenhouse, you need to make sure they're very, very protected from the colder temperatures and the frosts, okay? So if you don't have any way to keep them warm in your greenhouse, you may want to take them indoors, and I'm going to talk about that as well. But in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this as an experiment. So I'm going to have two of these plants in the greenhouse, and two I'm going to take back indoors, and we'll see how they fare, okay? Now, Pepper plants generally need to be above 15C and above 20C when you want them to be fruiting and flowering, okay? Now, obviously, we're doing this to keep them alive. We are not going to try and keep them fruiting and flowering over winter. Unless you have a heated greenhouse and lights and all that kind of thing, it's just not going to happen. So even indoors, we're not going to try for that. What we're going to do instead is the ones that are in the greenhouse, we're going to protect the roots, okay? So we're going to put them in quite a big pot with a lot of soil because that's it's, it's a thermal mass thing. All that soil around them will protect the roots from the worst and I'm going to put them onto a little heat mat so that if it does drop too cold, that, that will keep them warm. So that's what I'm going to do in here. Indoors, I'm just going to put them on a sunny window ledge indoors, okay? So we're going to do that first, we'll pot them up and then I'll talk about watering. So I'm going with quite a big pot, as you can see, plenty of space because I want there to be a lot of compost in there. So I'm just going to move these out of the way. And a couple of you guys asked me this week about compost. Yes, I reuse my spent compost. Um, but what I do is I sieve it to take out anything that I don't want in there. So any old root mass, anything like that. And also, it's a chance for me to have a really good check of it because if there's any pests or anything in there, you don't want them. You want to get rid of them. And then I mix in some fresh compost into my spent compost because I want to make sure there's a wee bit of the organic matter has been replaced that's been used up and there's a wee bit of fer sort of nutrition in there as well. So yes, I sieve it, get rid of anything I don't want, check for any pests, anything nasty, and I mix through some fresh compost. Now, I've got it in the pot. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to plant this about a couple of inches lower than it was originally. So we're going to plant it a bit deeper. Again, it's because we're using this compost to protect the roots. Okay. So it's in there, it's nice and deep in there. Now, here's another thing. All those roots that we just trimmed, those are hair roots or super fine roots. We do not want any little air pockets in this pot because if those roots are sitting in an air pocket, they'll die. So two things we do. Firstly, give it a really good tap so that all that compost drops and give it a really, really good firm down. I think that rain's getting heavier. And then top that compost up on top again, okay? There we go. So the second thing, if I can find a handy tray. Do 
the other thing we're going to do, which I would normally do outside, but I can't because the camera's blocking the door. So we give it a really good water. So that's why I put it in here so I can give it a good water. And I mean a really, really, really good water. Fill that pot and let that water drain through and do that a few times because you're the, encouraging the compost to drop through and get rid of any of these air pockets. So that's one done. I'll leave it there to drain and I'll do the next lot. So what I've done is I've got two in little terracotta pots. Those are the two that are coming indoors with me. The two that are in the much bigger plastic pots are the ones that are going to be staying in here. So those need more soil around them as a protective layer. And also I have terracotta pots indoors, so it's just so they match. So I'm going to move those out the way. Or oh, that was a theory, but that doesn't fit. That's too tall to fit on the shelf. Okay, so the next part then. Okie dokes. Oh, I had a whole fight getting this set up for you guys. Right, so I have a little heat mat that I'm going to put under here and put the plants on top of it. Okay, um, and then how it's going to work is... I've got this thermostat system that I'm going to use because I'm not heating the whole greenhouse just for two plants. But obviously I want to protect those roots when it gets really cold. So I'm going to plug things into this thermostat, which I can hang up here. And then what we do with this now is it's got this little probe, okay? Now, this will determine the temperature and I'm going to put it in the soil on one of the pots. And the reason for that is I'm going to set it so that it makes sure the soil in these pots is always above 5C, okay? Because that's the thing, I'm wanting to protect them from the extreme cold and the frosts. So I want to make sure those roots are always above 5C. It's not going to really make a difference just now. It's not even going to kick in yet, trust me. But I guarantee once we get into the colder weather, this is going to be really important. Now, for the plants that we've got indoors, all I'm going to do with them is put them on a sunny windowsill because they're indoors so they will be warm. They're not going to be warm enough to be fruiting but like I said, these are, we're wanting these to be dormant plants over winter. We just want them to be warm enough indoors so they're nice and safe, okay? Sunny windowsill just so they get some light. Um, but one of the big things we're going to talk about now is watering and feeding because we want these plants to be dormant so we are not going to be giving them loads of water and feed, okay? So at the minute, we've given them a really good water just now to settle them in. We're not going to water them again until they're dry, okay? And we're going to water sparingly. So not like we did when they were actually big grown plants that were fruiting. It's just little every so often just to keep them ticking over and that's vital because you don't want those roots sitting in a soggy mess they're not going to use as much water as they usually do because they've no leaves and stems and things to feed so just a little every now and again maybe every few weeks and just see how you go so i hope this gave you a bit of an idea about the whole overwintering peppers thing and maybe it's not so scary now so are you going to overwinter yours? Let me know because it's going to be really interesting if we're all keeping an eye on each other and comparing how we get on and it's going to be dead interesting come spring and we'll see who's got pepper plants that have sprung back to life. And that's us. I will see you next week folks. See ya!